Hello and welcome. In this video, Rob and I are going to be talking about signs that you have self-abandoned as a mother and what to do about it. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Gabby. I'm Robin. We're here to help you be the hero of your story. So in this video, we're going to be talking about one of the manifestations of your own childhood programming. Um, and this is one that ne doesn't necessarily happen in childhood because this is one that starts to play out as uh, women become mothers. And so we're going to be talking about signs that you are someone who has kids and you are actually disconnecting from your sense of self. And as a result, you probably feel disconnected from who you truly are, your true sense of peace, joy, intrinsic fulfillment fulfillment and really knowing what it is you want in your life. If those have kind of rung true for you, as I said them, we're going to dive deeper into why that is and what you're going to do about it. There's a really good chance that too, if that is you, you are exhausted because if you have, um, if you're playing this out in your life unintentionally, you are probably over giving to so many places and be trying to be there for everyone and be everything. And in the end, you probably just feel like, oh, I just want to go in a room by myself and just sleep or not be not be bothered. But you can't let yourself do that because then that would cause a whole unraveling. So self-abandoning is literally like taking. So within us, I like we like to think of it as that you've got this jewel within you. And this jewel, as your life goes on, you come into this world and you've got this beautiful jewel of your true self, your authentic self. And then as the years go on, in your childhood, in your adult life, all these layers of dirt and muck get put on top of this, this jewel. And that process of your the dirt becoming on on kind this of becomes tool, concrete. It comes, like, comes concrete, yeah. and now all of a sudden you're just this stagnant person. And and in fact, this stagnation, this stagnant person, this concrete tends to be a metaphor for life. We stay the same. Everything repeats. Everything's concrete and solid. Instead, this jewel can express itself dynamically. And this process of becoming concrete is you disconnecting from your sense of self. And so some of the examples of what does it mean to be disconnected from your sense of self as a mother? Well, one of the biggest things that people don't realize is a sign that they're disconnecting is that if you are a mom and if people, you go out through your life and you're connecting with your family, your extended family, your social groups, you know, your community, if people start to ask you about how you are and you're like, oh, how's everything been? You, you run into someone at the grocery store, all these places. And people say, how are you? How has everything been? The first thing that comes to mind for you is actually not how you are and how you feel. The first thing that comes to mind is either, oh, well, my husband's doing this, my partner's doing this, my kids are doing this, my youngest is in this sport, my oldest is doing so well in school, all of these things, but it, it's a almost reactive response because you've been disconnected from your sense of self for so long. And society's programs told you that that is the way that you're supposed to live. Because if you went to the grocery store and a friend stopped you and said, how are you? And you said, you know what? I feel so tired, so stressed out, so frustrated. I am so sick of having to get up early in the morning just to make lunches. My kids don't really appreciate it. Then we have to rush them out the door. They never make their beds. The house is a mess. And then we get to school barely on time. And then I've got to rush over and help the PTA with this or rush to get a run in really quick before I have this other, this dentist appointment. And you're just moving. You're just going through the motions of your life because that's what everyone does. And therefore, you have been taught that busy means that you are worthy. And if you said really deep down that you're like, you know what? I don't really want to take my kids to school today. I think it's stupid. I really don't want to go to this PTA meeting. And you know what? My kids were at the doctor's last week. And like, I am, it's a silly appointment. Like if you really said what you felt, people would look at you and be like, well, that's weird. Or what if you went the other way and said, you know what? I'm friggin' amazing. So last week I went and climbed this mountain and then I went to this yoga retreat and you know, I felt a little bit bad leaving my kids for the weekend, but they're good. Like their dad's with them and they're going to be just fine. And I just so reconnected with my sense of self. You know what the problem is? Your friend would look at you and be like jealous and be like, oh, it must be nice. And then you'd feel bad and you want somebody instead to high five you and be like, Heck yeah. that's awesome. We don't live in that world yet. The second sign that you have disconnected from yourself your sense of self as a mother would be that you don't have many hobbies. Now, the fr a lot of times people think, whoa, whoa, wait, I have hobbies. I go to the gym, I work out, I go for runs. Those hobbies are not coming usually for most people. Now, granted, there's people who like truly love running. 
But most people, if you're having this fitness related or health related hobby, that's giving you the excuse that you do have a hobby. It's not coming from this sense of I'm doing this for the sake of doing because I love doing it. Passion and creativity are the, the amount that we express ourselves in passion and creativity is a direct correlation to how in tune we are with ourselves because passions and creativity are the expression of self. It's you dancing with yourself and doing these things for the sake of your own being and the enjoyment of you being. But if you're someone who, if I asked you, what are your hobbies and, and interests and passions? And it takes you a second to go, I'm not sure there's a chance that you're disconnected from your sense of self. Or maybe when I say that, maybe something else happens. Maybe you go, well, I used to like doing these things, but maybe you don't do them anymore. Maybe you've not, you stopped giving yourself permission to be who you are because you started believing that you were only worthy as a person if you can make your kids or your family successful and happy, etc. Well, what about you being happy? What about you connecting with the things that you enjoy doing? In fact, right before this, Gabby and I were sitting in the jacuzzi and I was saying how like, you know, I don't remember exactly where it happened, but at some point we moved into our RV and at first I like, I wrote all these books. I didn't necessarily market them. I didn't do a good job selling them, but I wrote these books and it felt so good to have this expression of self. And even early on in our blog, there was just this joy in writing. And also I used to just read books for fun. And then we start creating all these businesses and everything started to become a task and I was saying like, God, I don't remember where that shift happened. And so I catch myself and I start to stack little things. Like for me, one of the easy ones is I start reading. I love Paulo Coelho books. So I'll start just reading for fun, just because I enjoy it. Even though in my head, it's like, well, I got to get something done. I got to clean or I got to write another blog or record another video or I got to, got to, got to, got And I have to catch it and go, you know what? Reading makes me feel happy. So my email list, sometimes I just like spend way too much time on an email list, but writing, makes me feel creative. It might not be always the best thing for my business, but it's really hard um, to do, but to find that spot where you just are like, I don't really care about the desired outcome, but it just makes me feel good to express and to connect uh, with, with the things that I'm thinking about. And the third and final reason that, or sign that you might be abandoning yourself as a mom would be that you feel this sense of, I'm not sure who I am anymore. And I think sometimes this, this feeling can be one that we quickly run away from because you know, whether you're a mom or you're anyone is going to confront this feeling at some point in their life where they go, I'm not sure who I am. And that feeling causes us a sense of insecurity because not knowing is the unknown. Unknown feels like death. It's scary. So if that inkling has come back for you, you're probably going to shut it out pretty fast. But if, you've, if you're someone who at any point in your life has ever had that dialogue run through your, he your head of like, I'm not sure who I am or like the person I used to be, I don't know her anymore. However, if you are someone who has self-abandoned, you might have this faint memory. You might have this feeling of where you can recall a time in your life where you did know who you were or you loved who you were or you expressed who you were. If you feel that sense of honestly, like a, what, what's the word? Uh, the positive reminiscent. memory, reminiscent about those times there's a good chance that one, that's a calling within your soul that you need to come back to it. It's like a, it's like a sign. It's like an alarm. Like, Hey, come on. It's time for you to come back to who you are. And it's also a sign to tell you that you're not, you're not living in that right now. You're not, you've disconnected from that. And it's time for you to actually reclaim your sense of self. That's what definitely, you know, what, what took us down this road where we're at in our life now is that, you know, I had five kids back to back, started really young, you know, so busy having kids. And then I finished with the fifth and I was like, you know what? I want to camp more. I just want to sit on the beach. And then I see the waves. I'm like, you know what? I want to grab a surfboard. I want to play in those waves. And then you just start, you just start doing things. And then we started hiking, you know, we didn't used to hike. And then we go and hike. I'm like, wow, this feels good to like, just be, I remember as a kid being on trails and just loving this, the sense of like, I wonder where this trail goes to. And there's so many different ways that you can step out into the unknown. It doesn't always have to be through adventure sports, but a lot of times just getting in nature is the easiest way to reconnect or at least to trigger some of those thoughts of what you um, used to be or what you used to like to do. Because I think all of us at some point loved to do cartwheels in the grass or play tag or hang on the monkey bars. Like even if we start from just those, you might literally start to break up that concrete that is tightening around that beautiful gem inside of you. 
So Robin shared so many great tips for you to come back, to start to discover your sense of self again and reclaim that sense of self again. But there's one big uh, thing that comes up for a lot of people, a big conflict that comes up when people are trying to actually take these actions, take these steps. And the thing that comes up is actually not something physical. It's not like, oh, it's raining outside. I like can't go have fun. It's usually not that. In fact, the big thing that's standing in your way between where you are now and your authentic self that you that you is full of joy and love is your childhood programming. And there's a couple of different versions of childhood pro programming that are that could come up for you. And it's obviously dependent on your childhood. Of course, we talk about in other videos how you're really just destined for your childhood programming and based on your astrology, but we'll save that for another video. But there's three core childhood programmings that are going to trigger you to essentially disconnect from your sense of self as a mom. And so there's one, the three possible reasons are one, you have a strong inner critic. So your own inner beliefs about yourself is that you have to live up to perfection, goodness, and morality. And so you have to follow society's standards of being a good mom. Now, this probably comes from a inner critic that was probably came from an external critic you had as a child. So whether that was a mom or, or a dad who was highly critical of you as a child, there's a good chance that that critic is coming out in your life as a mom and saying like, I have to be good, I have to be perfect, I have to be great for my kids and for the world. The second possibility is that you have a feeling of unworthiness, that you as you are is not good enough. You are not worthy. And again, this could be come from childhood, come from astrology, but there's this feeling that you can't, because you are not worthy, you are only worthy if you are accepted. You need to be accepted by your parents, but then this plays out as a mother because you need to be accepted by your kids because you haven't truly accepted yourself. And so instead of trying to, uh, a lot of people with this wound end up not disciplining their kids or feeling like they're constantly walking on with egg their, walking on eggshells with their kids because they don't want to be rejected by their kids emotionally. This is not literal rejection, it's just an emotional rejection of they don't want their kids to be mad at them because then it would make them feel unworthy. And the last one is that is that the wound could be coming from a childhood programming of abandonment. Abandonment is the feeling that whether physically or emotionally, you were abandoned as a child. This is kind of a self-explanatory. Obviously, there's people who have were literally as abandoned as kids, but have you ever thought about if you felt emotionally abandoned as a kid? Did you feel like you weren't able to actually share and express your emotions as a kid and be accepted for uh, the emotional chaos that was you as a child that is just a natural part of life? And are you playing that out now as a feeling of, I can't let my kids abandon me. If my kids abandon me emotionally, if they don't feel like, um, if I don't do something for them, and if they at all feel like I'm a bad mom, then they're gonna leave me and I'm gonna be alone. Yeah, and so all of these wounds are, um, they're, they can be painful. They can really like, to overcome these wounds, it is the unknown. It is um, scary to, to face these realities. But I encourage you, we encourage you that we are at this most amazing time in, in the earth's history to where we can actually get the support we need to well, defy the norm and heal these because we're, we are not alone in this. This is a generational pattern, a generational deficiency in feeling worthy of feeling um, attachment, of feeling included in the tribe. And so we had oh, like our grandparents probably felt the same thing from our great grandparents that you don't understand me and that you're making me have to be perfect. And then they carry that to the next generation. And then we have our parents who are like, no, 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 you can't rock the boat. The world is dangerous. You need to fit in. You have to, this is just how it is, right? Did you hear that as a kid? Like, this is just how it is. This is just life. Get over it. And I'm here to tell you it's not true. Like I was told that. Like that's just how life is. Like get over it. You know, life's not meant to be fair. But that's that's putting you as a victim. And really, you have this ability to be a creator and to make sure that your thoughts are in alignment with what your life is that you really want to live. That's why in Be the Hero, we talk so much about scripting, about being able to connect to your energetic field, to the quantum field, and instead of just constantly chasing worthiness or chasing attachment, you can draw those things to you because then you start to really hone into the fact that you have that already inside of you. Okay, so if we gave you a lot of really helpful tips here, but 
I, I, again, I encourage you, like, it's up to us. If we don't do it, then we're put, passing that back down to our kids. And, you know, we, that doesn't always end the, well, the way we want it to. We want to be more for our kids. And this is how we can be more for our kids. Isn't by signing up for more lessons. Isn't by helping them with their homework. It's not by taking them on a trip to Disneyland. It's about healing our own shadows, our own wounds, so that we can show up authentically for our kids so that they see that authenticity isn't perfect. So if you guys want to check out Be The Hero, uh, you can join Be The Hero Academy for your first week totally free. All you have to do is visit Be The Hero Dot academy that's it be the hero dot academy no dot com and there you can learn more about all the amazing things that we offer in be the hero academy in be the hero, hero academy it's a group coaching membership so not only are you going to get live weekly group coaching calls every single week but you're also going to get access to a growing archive of constantly new workshops and courses so right now i think we have something like 25 about different uh different courses and workshops in there and every single week we're adding new stuff to that we have different quests that you can take depending on your desired result, desired goal that you have right now in your life. So if you are someone who is watching this and you're probably, there's a good chance if you're watching this video right now, there's one of two quests that you want to take on. One is the parenting quest because in the parenting quest, not only is Robin teaching you exactly how to help you, uh, bring out the authentic jewel of your child it's helping you have the tools to fulfill your own needs your own your own needs as a mom as a person and heal and fulfill your own desires so that you can lead by example but on the other hand if you're not ready for the parenting quest we have so many other quests we have quests like the relationship quest we have chakra healing journeys that you can take if you're at the phase of you're like i'm ready to heal this and i'm ready to step into my power into my worth and into my sense of love for myself in the end in be the hero academy we teach you how to reclaim your sense of intrinsic fulfillment in obsessed obsessive self-love uh, so you can learn more about be the hero academy if you guys enjoyed this video uh make sure you hit the like button and leave us a comment down below thank you for joining us namaste, namaste.